This 70s star is 71 years old. This is her now. There have been an inspiration to millions, yet many are no longer alive. The 1970s were a decade filled with colorful characters who left their imprint on pop culture. What happened to your favorite stars from the 1970s? Barbie Benton. At the age of 18, Barbie Benton started her modeling career, landing spreads in Playboy magazine. Benton was formerly known as Barbara Klein, but when she started dating Playboy impresario Hugh Hefner, who was over 30 years her senior, he disliked Barbie's Semitic-sounding name. Hugh was the one who persuaded Barbara to change her name to Barbie. Barbie Benton has progressed beyond modeling to being a well-rounded performer. She was able to get jobs in both film and television shows, but acting was not her only goal. Barbie was also the country music aficionado who enjoyed singing and had success with various country music CDs. Barbie found herself working for Playboy again in the 1990s. Benton was also eager to return to the Playboy home when E had a series on Hugh Hefner's many amorous partners. Then there's Cheryl Ladd. Cheryl Ladd, who was born and reared in South Dakota, had her big break in 1977 when she replaced Farrah Fawcett in Charlie's Angels. She remained a cast member until the show's end in 1981. Ladd went on to pursue a variety of careers, including creating an incredibly successful singing career. Cheryl Ladd remained a popular face on television after her stint on Charlie's Angels ended. She would not only played Jillian Deline in 29 episodes of Las Vegas, but she also starred in television programs such as Anger Management, NCIS, and Ballers. Other than that, Ladd spent her time writing and performing on Broadway as a published author. While she isn't as visible as she once was, there's little question that she will be remembered. Kate Jackson Kate Jackson dropped out of the University of Mississippi to pursue her acting goals and attended the American Academy of Dramatic Art. She had her first appearance on the television drama Dark Shadows in 1971. This was followed by a four-season recurring role on the program The Rookies. As the 1970s progressed, Jackson appeared in a number of films until breaking out with 1975's Charlie's Angels. Kate Jackson Now one fascinating fact about Charlie's Angels is that the show's name was originally created by Kay Jackson. The program was originally supposed to be named The Alley Cats, but the producers were not pleased and informed Jackson. As a consequence, she glanced around and saw a billboard depicting three angels. The rest, as they say, is history. Kay Jackson's dating life was less successful. Despite her brilliant job, three marriages resulted in three divorces. Sybil Shepard A Memphis, Tennessee native, Sybil Shepard began her career as a model before moving on to a successful acting career. Shepard's career took off when she won Miss Teenage Memphis and landed a part in 1971's The Last Picture Show. She garnered positive feedback for her performance and was nominated for a Golden Globe. The next year, she co-starred in The Heartbreak Kid with Charles Grodin wasn't long before she tried her hand at music, releasing her album, Sybil Does It, to Cole Porter. Sybil Shepard, right now. Sybil Shepard landed several high-profile jobs in the 70s. One of her most prominent performances was in Taxi Driver, a film directed by Robert De Niro. She then seamlessly transitioned from film to stage. Shepard would finally return to Hollywood a decade later, landing a role on ABC's Moonlighting. She won a Golden Globe for the part, and Shepard later got her own TV program, Sybil. She's most recognized for her role in the TV drama, The L Word. Then there was Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn knew she wanted to be a celebrity since she was three years old. After taking tap dance classes from a young age, Hawn soon went into the world of dancing, and by the late 1960s, she had landed her first acting job. Within a decade, Hahn had earned an Oscar award for her performance in Cactus Flower in 1969. The actress rose to prominence as one of the most in-demand comedic actresses, but she also appeared in dramas such as The Girl from Petrovka. Goldie Hawn, now. Hahn became a producer in the 1980s, working on the film Private Benjamin. As a consequence, the star was nominated for another Oscar award. The fruit doesn't seem to fall far from the tree, though, since Hahn is the mother of two accomplished actresses, Kate and Oliver Hudson. Not only is Hahn outspoken about her Buddhist views, but she's also an animal rights activist. 
The Han Foundation's mission is to provide adolescents with life-enhancing techniques for well-being. Susan Day Then Susan Day made her television debut as Lori Partridge in the famous 1970s sitcom The Partridge Family. The sitcom lasted from 1970 until 1974, during which time Day picked up a few minor parts here and there while she kept busy with The Partridge Family and its several spin-off ventures. Day starred in the CBS procedural drama L.A. Law from 1986 until 1992. Now, Susan Day Susan Day, 63, has resigned from acting after more than 30 years in front of the camera. While she continued to work solidly throughout the 80s and 90s with appearances in series such as Love and War and the TV drama Whose Child Is This? The Battle for Baby Jessica, Day had had enough by the early years of the new century. Her most recent television appearances were in the 2004 series Third Watch. Fabio Lanzoni Fabio is an Italian-born model who rose to prominence as the face of romance book covers. His flowing golden hair effectively portrayed the sense of a romantic hero. At one time, the model's face could be seen almost everywhere, including a lot of appearances in both TV series and films. Adonis, who is 6 feet 3 inches tall, won the jackpot when he was picked to be the face of Versace perfumes. Lanzoni, Fabio, now. Fabio is now in his late 50s, yet he hasn't let go of his gorgeous blonde hair. Fabio has opted to walk away from the glamorous life of a model, generally, as he nears the end of his life, but still he has time for minor appearances here and there. When Fabio accepts to participate in television and film projects, he often ends up portraying a version of himself. Fabio broke the trend somewhat in 2017 when he portrayed the Pope in Sharknado 5. Alison Arngrim Alison Arngrim rose to prominence as both a child actor and a child model. Alison's mother, Norma McMillan, was a voice actress on animated series such as Casper the Friendly Ghost. Thus, the skill ran in the family. Arngrim made her television debut at the age of 12 in 1974 with a part on Little House on the Prairie. Her portrayals as Nellie Olson was noteworthy since it was a new sort of character, the 1970s bad girl. Alison Arngrim now Looking back, Alison didn't appreciate her time on Little House on the Prairie. She compared it to suffering PMS for seven years. But it wasn't the only program she appeared on. Before becoming a stand-up comic, she appeared on series such as The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. Her next major break came when she played President Carter's daughter, Amy Carter, in the comedy CD. Allison has also worked on AIDS awareness. Then there was Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster may still seem youthful today, but this is mostly due to the fact that she's been in the performing profession since she was a kid. Her first TV appearance was in a TV ad when she was just three years old. Despite the fact that her brother, Buddy, was competing for a position, the casting agents saw something unique in Foster. Foster appeared in Martin Scorsese's famous film Taxi Driver in 1976 when she was barely a teenager. Foster, at age 12, co-starred in the film with Robert De Niro. Jodie Foster Now Foster was nominated for an Academy Award for her outstanding performance in Taxi Driver. This would lead to an amazing career filled with memorable parts. Just a few years later, she won another Academy Award for her performance as Cleary Starling in the highly acclaimed Silence of the Lambs. Her most recent appearances include the Spike Lee-produced Inside Man, in which she co-starred with Clive Owen and Denzel Washington. This was followed by a part in Matt Damon's Elysium. Cher, then. Cher was born in El Centro, California, and rose to prominence with her musical partner, Sonny Bono. The couple were also husband and wife at the time, and their first song, I Got You, Babe, was a huge triumph. The couple had their own program, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour in the 1970s, which had a weekly audience of 30 million people. Cher distinguished herself from other performers by her eccentric fashion style. Cher Now Cher's luster never dimmed. Even in her 70s, her musical career continued with success such as Halfbreed, Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves, and Dark Women. Cher rose to such prominence that she ultimately earned her own Las Vegas show. She allegedly earned up to $330,000 a week for the show. She subsequently became an actress, receiving an Academy Award for her performance in Moonstruck. Closer to the truth, Cher's first album in 12 years was released in 2013. 
In 2017, she returned to the road for the classic share tour. Then there's Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon, a product of Jackson Heights in Queens, New York, got her first break while attending a casting call with her then-husband, Chris Sarandon. Her part in Joe was little, but it got her started. She then appeared in A World Apart and Search for Tomorrow, two soap operas. Sarandon's first significant film role came when she was hired as Janet Weiss in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The film is still considered a cult classic. Susan Sarandon, now. Sarandon's career really took off in the 1980s. She received her first Academy Award nomination in 1981 for her performance in Atlantic City. That was a great way to start the decade, and she would only build on that success toward the conclusion of the decade and into the 1990s. After starring as Annie Savoy in Bull Durham, she became a bankable celebrity. Sarandon was nominated for four Oscars between 1991 and 1995, winning in 1995 for Dead Man Walking. Her humanitarian effort is also well known. Linda Carter Linda Carter established a name for herself when she won the Miss World USA pageant in 1972, taking home the big award for Arizona. She continued her acting career after her pageant days, making her professional debut in Nakia in 1974. She began her career in a police drama but was cast as Diana Prince in 1976 for the TV series Wonder Woman, which depicted Prince's superhuman escapades that catapulted Carter to stardom. Linda Carter now. Linda Carter had no plans to vanish once Wonder Woman finished, and she's been working steadily since then. Carter brought her skills to Broadway in 2005 when she played Mama Morton in the long-running production of Chicago, the musical based on the 2003 film. In 2007, the actress and musician went on tour with her show, An Evening with Linda Carter. She was most recently seen in the TV program Supergirl.